Number 85. Oh, hey there. What's your name? And you're in fourth grade? Awesome. And what will you be singing for us tonight? <laughs> Let it go. Awesome song choice. Whenever you're ready, you may begin. And now imagine the worst version of Let It Go being sung that you have ever heard. This is just one of the 96 auditions that I sat through while serving as a student director for the junior high production of Willy Wonka Jr. Being a high school student and involved in the, in the high school productions, the director asked myself and some of my classmates to help. Our duties included choreographing dances, casting the characters, placing people in scenes, painting sets, and helping stage crew move the sets. This was no easy task. Have you ever tried to keep track of over 100 fourth through eighth graders? Those kids are wild. We would practice from 6.30 to 9 o'clock, five days a week to get ready to go on the big stage. One of the things that I was assigned to was choreographing the squirrel dance. More specifically, the tap dancing squirrel dance. And I'm sure many thoughts are going through your head right now. One of those being, Brody, I've seen Willy Wonka before, and I don't remember there being tap dancing squirrels. And you're correct. There's no tap dancing squirrels in the movie, but there sure are in our show. And another thing you're thinking is, Brody is a dancer and is qualified to teach a bunch of squirrels how to tap dance? <laughs> the answer is no, absolutely not. Do I look like a dancer? We were practicing night after night to get this dance down. And although I have grown up rodeoing, competing in, competing in rodeo, showing goats and showing cattle, I had no training in tapping squirrel wrangling. But I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I was going to teach these squirrels the best dance possible. We were working hard. And finally, open night of the musical arrived. There were over 1,000 tickets sold. Before the squirrels went on the stage that night, I made sure that their shoes were tied, their tails were set, and their nerves were calmed. Then their music began and out they went. They were tapping and a tapping and a tapping and a tapping, and then one of them fell right on their face. Then you wouldn't believe what happened next. Another one and another one and another one fell, just like dominoes until there was only half of them still standing. The crowd was laughing hysterically from the falling squirrels. But the laughter and mishap didn't phase those rodents. They quickly got back up on their feet and finished the dance the best I had ever seen it done. Come to find out they had slipped on bubble soap that was all over the stage from the scene before. In the scene before, there was bubbles and bubble machines everywhere and one of them leaked all over the floor and stage crew didn't have enough time to clean it up. Once the squirrels came off the stage that night, they had the biggest smiles on their faces. Then, when it finally came time for the performance for them to go and take their bow, they took the biggest bow of them all, received a standing ovation, and the loudest cheers of the night. Now flash forward to the end of the performances, and I'm cleaning in the back hallway. And when a group of the squirrels came up to me and gave me a huge hug, they looked at me and said, Brody, we just want to say thank you for all that you did for us. You taught us how to tap, taught us how to think on our toes, and taught us to be ready for anything that came our way. When they told me this, I shed a tear because it truly meant a lot. It showed me that my hours and hours of hard work and dedication in creating the dance, teaching the dance, and then perfecting the dance had paid off. And although I didn't get to go on stage and receive a standing ovation and take a big bow, their smiles and laughter and words made it all worth it in the end. Now, it might be difficult to get tap dancing squirrels slipping on bubble soap out of your heads, but I want you to picture this instead. Picture a little boy wearing a giant cowboy hat, riding on a little yellow pony named Merry Legs, trying to swing a rope and rope a steer that's about the same size as the pony. Got that image in your brain? That little boy is me. As I said earlier, I've been competing in rodeo since I was in kindergarten. My mom had grown up competing in high school rodeo and my dad uses, uses his horse every day to check the cows in the pasture. So growing up with horses and competing in rodeo was my destiny. One of my highlights from my whole rodeo career would have to be during my senior year. Not only did I defend my state champion title in two different events, I was able to add another one to my collection. 
I was named the 2019 Illinois High School Rodeo Association State Champion Team Roper right alongside my team roping partner Josie. And while winning the title was pretty cool, being able to rope with Josie took the cake. After every single run, Josie would look at me and say, thanks for roping with me, partner. No matter if we won or if we lost, if she missed or I missed, she was truly grateful for every opportunity she had and she never took any of them for granted. As I began competing more and more in rodeo, I quickly began to realize that that's all that I was doing. I was only competing. I forgot how I got to the spot that I was in and I forgot about those who helped me get to where I was. I forgot about my parents who drove me to all of the rodeos. My grandparents who were cheering me on in the stands. The people in the back pen sorting the cows. The people at the chutes letting the steers out. I forgot about the judges who were watching every single run, the announcer who was commentating the whole rodeo, and the other contestants who were pushing me and challenging me to do my best. While I may have missed a couple people, it's clearly evident that there are a lot of moving pieces and parts to make something successful. And I sometimes think we forget to slow down and truly appreciate and realize the big and little pieces. I want you to think for a second. When was the last time you truly slowed down and you realized all that you have to be thankful for? When was the last time you slowed down and you realized all that you've done? And when was the last time you told someone thank you for what they did to help you? It's an easy thing to do, yet we're always forgetting to do it. I'm guilty of it too. I now want you to think back on a time when you, won, when you won or received an award. Whether you received that award recently or a little further down the road, think back on that award and think, of, uh, think about all of the hard work you put in to get there and the people that helped you along the way. What's stopping you from thanking them? Josie was always there to thank me after roping with her after a team roping run, and the squirrels thanked me for helping them tap. But why didn't I thank others too? Why didn't I thank the arena director, the stock contractor, the stage crew, and the light crew, and the other student directors for all that they did for me? Because without them, I wouldn't have been successful in all that I was doing. This year as a state officer, I have the opportunity to thank my parents and advisors up on the big stage and big screens at state convention. But what's stopping you from doing that tonight? As you take your big bow and receive a standing ovation for all of your hard work that you put in, Make sure to thank those around you, because without them, you wouldn't be here. Tonight, I challenge each and every one of you that's listening to thank at least two people that have thanked you, or who have helped you in some capacity. Show them your appreciation and gratitude, because without them, you wouldn't be here. And your words mean a lot. Simply saying thank you can make someone's day. And although you don't get to have a big stage and big screens and smoke machines and lights, just say thank you. And to conclude, I would like to thank my teammates Gage, Lane, Colin, and Emma for all that they do for me throughout the year and for the state staff here at the FFA Center for all that they do for us officers. Because without them, we wouldn't be here. Thank you so much for listening and have a great evening.